Welcome back to Novel's tutorial. Okay. Today we'll be looking at balancing of chemical equation. When I say balancing of chemical equation, it's one of the fundamental things that any chemistry student needs to get right away before you can really have your way in chemistry. Now, this balance of chemical equation is operated based on the law of conservation of matter, which states that matter can either be created or be destroyed during the course of a chemical reaction, but can be transformed from one form to another. So that is to say, from the reactant, let's say, just like you see at the board, from the reactant, when reactant A plus reactant B combine to give us reactant, uh, to give us products A, B. Now this represents, these two represent reactants. And A, B represents what? The products. Now, that is just a very simple uh, brief a sample of what a, a chemical reaction looks like. Now, in balancing of the chemical equation, we look at the numbers of atoms on the reactant side, whether it tallies with the numbers of atoms on the product side. If it doesn't tally, then we need to use a scaling factor, a factor, okay, that numerous that can help balance what we have there on the reactant on the product side should be balanced with what we have on the reactant side in order to follow the law of conservation of matter which every chemical equation must obey I like quickly for us to look at some examples okay, of how we balance equation now let's say example example one how do we balance this reaction? Reaction between hydrogen. When hydrogen combines with oxygen to give us water. Now, hydrogen is presented by the symbol H2. It combines with oxygen, which is presented by the symbol O2. And they are both gases to give us what? Water, which is a liquid form, represented by the formula H2O. Now, if you look at the reactant side, remember, according to the law of conservation of matter, the total numbers of the atoms of each of the elements on the reactant side, that is the left-hand side, must balance with what we have on the right-hand side, which is representing the product side. Now, we have two hydrogen here on the reactant side and we also have two hydrogen on the product side, which means the hydrogen initially is balanced. Then we look at the oxygen. We have two oxygen on the reactant side. Then we have just one oxygen atom on the product side, which means oxygen atom on both sides are not balanced. So we attempt to balance it by looking at getting the LCM between 2 and 1. The LCM between 2 and 1 is what? 2. And then we use 2 to multiply the sign that the numbers of atoms there is 1. So we use 2 to multiply the product sign. So with this, we are able to balance the oxygen on the reactant side and on the product side. But in the process of trying to balance oxygen, we inevitably created another problem. We have increased the numbers of hydrogen, which the numbers of hydrogen on the product side is now, is a product side. It's now what? It's now a total of four, two times two, four. Then the numbers of hydrogen here remains two. So we'll come over to this side and multiply here by two. Now by the time you look at every the combination, total numbers of atoms on the reactant side, that's the left hand side, 
we balance with what we have on the product side. That is where we can conclusively say that this equation is balanced. This is just one of those simple examples. Okay, so in this reaction, it shows you that two moles shows you that two moles of hydrogen is needed to react with one mole of oxygen to give us two moles of what water. That's what the detail that you can get from this equation. To give us two moles of water. Then again, we we'll look at let's cite another example. Example two. Let's look at the reaction between carbon monoxide and oxygen to produce carbon carbon four oxide. So the reaction between carbon monoxide and oxygen. Carbon 4 oxide, or you call it carbon dioxide. Just like in the first case, we quickly try to put down the reaction, reactant side and the product side. Carbon monoxide is presented by the symbol CO as a gas. Oxygen still represented by the symbol O2 as gas. When both combine together, a spark together, they give us CO2, which represents carbon 4 oxide. CO2 is a carbon 4 oxide. So you are making out the solution for this reaction. Now, in this case, we have, looking at it, we have one carbon on this side, reactant side, we have one carbon on the product side. So carbon initially is balanced. Then on this side we have one oxygen atom plus two oxygen, that is a total of three oxygen atoms. But on this side we are having just two oxygen atoms. That makes it the oxygen unbalanced. Now, because these two are not as one reactant, so we try to look at the LCM between this and this, one and two. And then we'll, put, we'll keep this one as a reserve because part here is not balanced. We'll keep this as a reserve in case we have any reason to adjust. Now, LCM between 2 and 1 remains 2. So multiply this by 2 and I come over here and I multiply this by 2. Now by doing so, I increase both oxygen and carbon. Let's see. Total carbon here is 2, total carbon on this side is 2. Oxygen on this side is 2 plus 2, which is 4. And oxygen on this side is 2 times 2, which is what? 4. Which shows that we have 2 moles, 2 moles of CO2, is, of CO, is needed to combine, is needed to combine with 1 mole, 1 mole of oxygen to produce what? Two moles. To produce two moles of CO2. And this follows the law of conservation of matter. Next, we we'll look at, we'll be going into some more, a little more uh, detailed and complex uh, equations. Okay. Example three. This time, the reaction in between, in which ammonia, ammonia gas, this is ammonia. Ammonia is born in oxygen to give us nitrogen 2 oxide. This is nitrogen 2 oxide. And steam. 
steam in this side is our liquid will be written as G, representing steam. Steam and water share the same formula, but just that water is presented with L as a liquid. Steam is water in vapor form. So this is steam. Okay, then we look at it based on the same law of conservation of matter. The numbers of atoms of each of the elements on the reactant side and on the product side must balance. Then again you look. One nitrogen here, over here on the product side is also one nitrogen. Nitrogen seems to be okay. Hydrogen is three here, but over here on this product side is two. So we'll keep that in our mind. Then oxygen here is two on this reactor side, and on the product side is one plus one, which is also two. So the only thing that seems unbalanced in this equation is hydrogen. On this side we have three, and on this side we have two. So we look at the LCM between the LCM, that's highest common multiple, between, between these three and two. Three and two. The LCM gives us six. So what can we do to multiply, what can we use to multiply three to make it six? And what can we use to multiply? These are the factors, scalar factor we're going to use to balance this equation. What can we use to multiply 2 to make it 6? Simply, we multiply this 3 by 2 and we multiply this 2 by 3. By so doing, we have balanced the hydrogen, but inevitably, we have created another problem. So we look out for what next to do. So, nitrogen here is now 2, but on this side is what? 1. So, quickly go for the nitrogen, we balance it, leave this for any further adjustment. By introducing 2 here, we also have increased the oxygen atoms here, as well as this one has also been increased. So, here we have 2 oxygen plus another 3, makes it a total of what? 5. Meanwhile, oxygen on this side is what? Oxygen on this reactant side is just 2. What can we multiply by 2 to make it 5? So that here will be 5, and here will be 5, and everything will balance. And that tells us we can use fraction. We don't usually use a decimal. If you have it in decimal, you convert it to fraction. If you have it in a improper, improper mixed fraction, you still convert it to improper fraction. We can use whole number, we can use improper fraction, but not decimal as given in maths. So, what we can use to multiply some persons, yes, you can rightly suggest O oh, to multiply 2 to make it 5. I use 2.5. 2.5 is the same as what? 2.5 is the same as 2.5. And 2.5, and and if 2 multiply 2 plus 1, that will be the same as 5 over what? 2. So, please. We place here 5 over 2. That's more mature. We don't use decimal. We use either in fractions, improper fractions, or we use uh, old numbers. So by doing this, you will agree with me that 5 over 2 times 2. 5 over 2 times 2, 2 will cancel 2. So what we will have left here is 5 oxygen, which tallies with the total numbers of oxygen we have on the reactant side and on the product side. So by virtue of this, we have balanced this equation, but this balancing is in fraction. And if we want to clear the fraction, we multiply all the sides all through by the denominator of this fraction. So like this, it is balanced, but it's balanced, it's balanced in fraction. It's balanced in fraction. So if we want to clear the fraction, we multiply all through by this denominator. Let's quickly do that and let's see what we get. So 2 times the order of this, so that the 2 will clear out here. 2 times 2, that will give us 4NH3. This is how you see in most textbooks. And this 2, if you multiply 2 times 5 over 2, all 2. This 2 will cancel this 2. So what you are left with what? You are left now with just 5 oxygen. So 5 moles of oxygen will be left here, O2, as gas. Then over here, 2 times this fraction, 2 times 2 here, also gives us 4NO as gas. And then 2 
multiply 3, that gives us 6 H2O as steam. So with this, if you look at it, you can now do your counting, you calculate numbers of atoms on the reactant side, check if it tallies with what you have on the previous side. Now, nitrogen, we have four atoms of nitrogen, reactant side, on this side we also have four atoms of nitrogen. So nitrogen is balanced. Ox hydrogen, we have four times three. So 12 total, 12 atoms of hydrogen on the reactant side. Then here is two times six. And that's six times two. That is also 12 hydrogen on the product side. So hydrogen and nitrogen is balanced. Then the oxygen, we have a total of, on the reactant side, five times two. Five times two is ten atoms of oxygen on the reactant side. Then on the product side, we have four oxygen atoms plus six oxygen atoms, which makes a total of what? Ten. Following and obeying the law of conservation of mass. In this reaction, we can say the ratio of this combination is 4 is to 5 is to 4 is to what? 6. Just like this one is 2 is to 2, uh, 5 over 2 is to 2 is to 3. These are proceedings that we need to follow while balancing a chemical equation. I'd like to take the, the fourth one. Let's see how you can, by now, please do stay subscribed to our YouTube channel, Knuckles Tutorial, where you get nothing but the best. Example 4. The decomposition of potassium trisochloride 5, when heated, produce potassium chloride and liberates oxygen as a gas. Now, you attempt to balance this equation. Now, you check how many potassium atoms do we have on this side? We have one potassium atom, we also have one on this side. Okay? Then potassium seems to be okay. Chloride atom, we have one chloride atom, we have one chloride atom on the product side. Chloride seems to be balanced. Then on this side we have three oxygen atoms, and on this side we have two oxygen atoms. So oxygen seems to be the controversial atom. It's not bad. So quickly, just like we did before, we look for the LCM between three and two, and it gives us six. So what do you use to multiply this three to make it six, and what do you use to multiply this two to make it six? Same thing, you use, three, you use two to multiply this side. So multiply here by two, and we use 3 to multiply the sign. So having done that now, we have balanced the oxygen but creating another problem because we have increased inevitably the potassium chloride. That's potassium and chlorine atom. As we increase 2, 2. So we come to this side and multiply here also by 2. With this, the equation is simply very balanced, following the law of conservation of matter. And if you look at the ratio of the reaction, it is 2, 2 is to, as 2 is to 2 is to 3. That is the ratio of the product that is needed to produce 2 moles of potassium and 3 moles of oxygen. My dear audience, by now I know you are already very excited with balancing of chemical equation. Sometimes people, you look, it, think, it seems to look like ah, balancing this equation is, is something else. It will be very difficult. But if you follow the simple tricks, those simple rules, ensure that the total number of atoms you have on the product side tallies with the total number of atoms of each element on the reactant side. Very simple analysis. If you follow it judiciously, you will get the required answer. And then, if, on the other hand, you are struggling with the figures to use, a simple arithmetic to follow is knowing how to get the LCM. If you have some variables, like in the subscript, like you saw, here was 3 and this was 2. So we look for the LCM between 3 and 2, and that was 6. So what do I use to multiply 3 to make it 6? What do I use to multiply 2 to make it 6? 
So that is you saw that is an exchange of the two year will make it multiply this, give me will give me six, use three year multiply this two and also give us six. Okay. Lastly, let's look at uh, okay, a reaction between okay, an example, let's take example five. Reaction between uh, H2SO4 and aqueous and calcium, okay, sodium transocarbonate 4. Sometimes be mindful, a reaction can be given to you and it can be ultimately balanced, but just testing you to know if you know actually what the principle of balancing of chemical equation is. So you just watch out for some equations. So in this reaction, H2SO4 well, is an exchange of radicals. This is a reaction between an acid and a said, uh, maybe uh, sodium carbonate. It will always liberate carbon form side alongside formation of salt and water. The salt that will form will be Na2SO4. Okay, in aqueous. And then water, which is H2O. And then carbon 4 oxide will be given over CO2. Now, looking at this equation, remember the principle governing the balance of chemical equation. Total numbers of atoms you have on the reactant side must balance with what you have on the product side. Now, let's check before we see if and see if it is balanced. Two hydrogen on this side. Two hydrogen on this side. Hydrogen seems to be okay. SO4 two, SO4 one on this side. SO4 one on this side is okay. It's balanced. Sodium two atoms here. Sodium two atoms here is balanced. Carbon one. Carbon one. Carbon is okay. Oxygen total of what? Three. On this side. Oxygen here. This is one plus two, three. So you can see it is not in all cases that you need to balance. So you just watch out first whether the equation given to you is balanced, even when they tell you to balance the equation. But once the total numbers of atoms on the reactor side balances with what you have on the product side, you need not do anything for that. The equation is balanced. Okay. Example six. I think this should be. Yes, let's see this one. ACL and chloric acid reacting with uh, calcium trisocarbonate 4. That's lines 2. In this reaction, this reaction gives us, uh, it will give us calcium chloride, which is CaCl2. Okay? In aqueous states, and then water and carbon 4 oxide. Now, what are the problem with this? If you look at it here, you see hydrogen is one here, but hydrogen is two inside water. Hydrogen is not okay. Chloride is one here, chloride is two, so chloride and hydrogen are not okay. Calcium one, calcium one, calcium is okay. Carbon one, carbon one, carbon is okay. Oxygen three on this side, oxygen one plus two, that is three. So this side seems to be okay. So our problem seems to be between hydrogen and chloride. So what is the answer between two and one? It's still two. So simply multiply here by two and check out. Multiply here by two, the two also will be affecting hydrogen. Okay, so I have two hydrogen on this side, and now we have two hydrogen on this side. We have two chloride atoms on this side, and now here on the product side, we also have two chloride atoms. So simply, you can see, this is how good and easy way you can balance chemical equation. Taking into cognizance the LCM and the law of conservation of matter. Thank you and stay subscribed to Noble Tutorial channel. God bless you as you do so.